but whatever you've put on under it should allow it to sort of smooth across your face and glide. I don't know who Debbie is, but I am in love with her personality. Now, what I am not in love with is her technique. You ever just have those days that are a little rough and you just need a hug? Give me a hug. Oh, give me a hug. Oh, I love hug. I thought to myself, life can be hard, but skincare is self-care. So I decided to sit down with a cup of my favorite pesticides and we are going to react to Debbie Ryan's guide to depuffing skincare. Now, depuffing skincare, when I cry, I get very puffy. For some people, based on their genetic factors, their dietary choices, or even the way they sleep, they get puffy. And I would like to know what Debbie Ryan does in order to get unpuffed, since there are some things that are backed by science and some things that are not. And I am so sometimes fluffy, but I am always Cassandra Bankson. I am an expert who's been in the industry for over 10 years, and as a medical esthetician, I've worked alongside and with both doctors and dermatologists. However, I am not a physician myself, but I do love analyzing, scrutinizing, drinking pesticides, and chatting with others to learn from them about their skincare, specifically on the interwebs, and that is what we're going to do today. What's up? My name is Debbie Ryan, and this is my skincare and beauty routine, whether I'm traveling or at home. These little stickers, which are fun to wear out during the day, but also cute for if you have little breakouts. We love someone who can respect the biology of their beauty. These are the little star face patches. I go to Target every freaking week and they are always sold out. Or I'm like, why? Why do you do this to me? These pimple patches are amazing. Zitstika, Hero, and Pacifica also have some amazing patches that aren't as fun. And then there is this flower glittery rhinestone one that Barbara uses. She is an amazing model and pimple patches are basically my best friends because yes, I am a grown up woman and I still break out. It is frustrating. We should do a video on that because it is frustrating. I start by clearing my skin, taking a washcloth and wetting a corner and wetting my face. And then I use this cleanser. This is how much I use, like the tiniest baby amount. I like to use my hands for basically my entire beauty routine. So I always start by washing my hands or cleansing my hands. Cold hands, I think is really nice to sort of depuff if you ever wake up with inflammation or whatever. So now we've rinsed and we can just rotate 90 degrees, use the dry corner. I don't think I've ever seen someone wash their face without actually like washing their face. This is great if you are camping and you don't have access to water or something like that, but to use a dry washcloth on your face. <laughs> Just like using the corner of a towel. This is actually not the worst thing you can do, but does it make me creep and crawl a little bit in my own skin. Yes, yes, yes it does. This is a form of physical exfoliation, but it's not a very even form of physical exfoliation because as you can imagine, when you have that towel or that washcloth, you're rubbing it across your skin. You can't ensure that you're doing that evenly everywhere with even pressure. So what areas are over exfoliated versus under exfoliated? And then if you're doing this every day, do you really want to over exfoliate the skin by doing this every day? Now this eye is clinical or is clinical. I know a lot of people love this. The ingredients are not bad. This is one that I feel like I need to try. It's the cleansing complex. I do think that it's expensive as compared to other things on the market. The price is something we can talk about in the future as well as some of these actives, but it does have yeah, a fairly decent lineup. Now, here's the question. Are you getting all of the product off if you're not even really rinsing with water. It is possible that she rinsed with water and we didn't see it because they cut it out, but looking at her hair, which is not tied back, which to each their own, her hair is not wet on the sides. And let me tell you, if I wash my face, my hair is very wet, like on the sides, if I don't have it tied back. It is a skill, it is a talent to wash your face without dousing yourself in water and literally becoming a wet, soggy dog mop, because that is what happens to me. I just, I can't imagine that the skin has been thoroughly cleansed in this situation. Actually, devil's advocate, like flip side here, some of the ingredients in this cleanser could really benefit the skin if they stayed on. This cleanser is not meant to do that and I would worry about it disrupting someone's skin barrier, but maybe she's getting some benefit from leaving it on because it's not being rinsed off by this towel washcloth properly. I do not know, but for the time being, let's just say, use something like a Foreo device, use something like a wet washcloth in the shower, maybe once or twice a week, use a chemical exfoliant. Star patches I like, this technique, wouldn't exactly recommend. Potion time. I like the ones that are a little bit more clarifying, 
or brightening. Every once in a while, I'll use witch hazel, just available at your local pharmacy, and just put a few drops sort of on my fingers or on the corner. And I like to just put these on like my nose where it can become quite congested. <laughs> Witch hazel. Witch hazel is something that many people hate, they despise. And for witch hazel, there are actually some times where it can be used. It's not a horrible product. It's not the best of the best. If you have really sensitive skin, it can be irritating, but I feel like it has been demonized. And with skincare, like there is nuance in everything. There is nuance in witch hazel. There is nuance in fragrance. There is nuance in washing your face with a washcloth and not actually using water. This is something that I'm assuming she does not have sensitive skin and based on Speaking about clarifying products, it sounds like maybe she is a little bit breakout prone. If she is a sister, that would be amazing to know. But overall, the witch hazel, it's not horrible, but I do think we have many more advanced toners on the market. If you are extraordinarily acne prone, I love the Paula's Choice BHA toner. If you are someone who lives in a populated city, you want a little antioxidant boost, you love K-beauty, the Isntree green tea toner is mwah, chef's kiss phenomenal. And if you're someone who's on the go, you travel all the time, you want something that supports skin, maybe gives a couple of nourishing ingredients, some vitamins, but works for people who kind of fluctuate in between being more oily and being more dry. Bubble skincare, dude, the, the spray toner, the bounce back toner. There are definitely some options that I would recommend over the witch hazel. My face just really freaked out actually later in my teens. You know, when you're a teenager, it's spotty. And then I was wearing makeup and under lights and I decided to educate myself as much as possible on what worked for me. And it's so different for everyone and so personal for everyone, but it's been a really nice ride to sort of mix and match and create this like beautiful menagerie of pieces that I can pull from and integrate depending on what my skincare needs and what my lifestyle indicates at the time. I believe that good skin and beauty is about like five things. It's about rituals and not miracles, gratitude, and letting go of resentment, drinking a lot of water and staying hydrated, getting a lot of sleep, and finding what works for you. Those things are actually quite spot on. What she says about things being individualized is so important. I feel like people don't realize it. Like just because I say, oh, this thing worked for me or this person had a great experience with this product doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone. Each person has different skin. Things can absorb into skin differently. And even depending on what you're using in a routine, stuff can change. And that's why things like anecdotes or personal testimonials as to how a product worked is good, but it doesn't suffice across the board. And that's why looking at active ingredients that have medical studies and data behind them and we understand how they work. We've actually seen those work with multiple people or throughout populations, throughout patient populations. And that's also why it's important to know what you are trying to deal with and know what ingredients or what formulas can help with that. And becoming a skin intellectual, getting educated on that is a great first step. But there's also a difference between, you know, looking up magazines that are written by people who maybe don't know better or who haven't read medical studies or who haven't put in time or expertise to help find that versus someone like like a doctor, like a dermatologist, like a cosmetic chemist, a medical esthetician, or even a skin influencer who has taken the time to understand people's skin so that when a recommendation is made, it's actually made for your skin and for the concern that you have, as opposed to just, oh, this one is great for many people. I adore that she brings this up. It is so important. And also she mentioned other lifestyle factors like sleep, you know, gratitude related to stress. Stress can literally cause your adrenal glands to go haywire. Your body produces cortisol, a hormone, and it can lead to more androgens or sex hormones in your skin that cause more oil to be produced, which acne bacteria feeds off of, which then causes us to break out, which is so frustrating. And a lack of sleep as well. A lack of sleep has been shown in some studies to impact trans epidermal water loss, meaning trans is trans or across. Epidermal means the top layer of skin. Water loss is water loss. So people who are chronically underslept, which hi has been myself recently because hi, I've been very stressed about some certain very things that happen. But if you sleep less, you might actually have a disrupted skin barrier. And that can be so frustrating. And many people don't make that connection to sleep and skin or sleep and Alzheimer's. Like there's a lot. We're not going to talk about all of the different things that can happen when our body is fed improperly, not exercised or not slept. But do know that those are three component key pillars of living healthfully and happily. And even outside of products or prescription medications, which yes, are part of a healthy lifestyle and a great routine. These lifestyle choices are very, very important as well and can play a huge impact on our bodies. I don't know who she is. I don't know what's going on inside of this brain that doesn't have a headband on it. I like this. We need more of this, please. More of this, less of the questionable towel scrubbing. This I've been using 
I love these little droppers. They make me feel like an alchemist. They make me feel like I'm doing real chemistry. Ah, oh, we hold the dropper. It makes us feel science. I love that. I love the feeling. I get it too. I know Dr. Idris does not like the droppers, yet I know many other people, including myself, very much do. They are quite fun. It's like playing with a pipette even when you're not in lab. But that aside, I don't love this product. This L'Oreal Revitalift is a 10% glycolic. It is a good exfoliant, and this is what I would have loved to see outside of the washcloth. Like, this is what we were looking for. But do I love this one? Not a ton. This has water, glycolic acid, we have glycerin, denatured alcohol. Now that can help products penetrate, but they can also be a little bit more drying to the skin. We do have things like aloe, sodium hyaluronate, things that can moisturize or act as a humectant to the skin. Then we do have ascorbyl glucoside, some citric acid. There are some nice brightening ingredients in here, especially that glycolic acid, but this is not my favorite. And if you want a good glycolic acid, I feel like there are other options. This right here I have fallen in love with. One of the most potent but yet gentle K-Beauty products. Products. This is a 10% PHA AHA resurfacing serum. And then the Inky List does have a glycolic acid toner, which is really good. The Ordinaries is also a really good glycolic acid toner, but that one is intense. So that is not for the faint of heart. It is not for people who need it gentle. If you want something a little bit more gentle, I would recommend something like this. And if you want something ultra gentle, because you have super sensitive skin, this one would be better. For me, L'Oreal has some products that are really hit and miss. I like that this one is fragrance free. I like that I think that they've done testing on their formulas, which is a good thing. But overall, Overall, it's not my favorite and it's not cruelty free. And I find that, you know, for $30, you can get other things that work very well, if not extraordinarily comparably, that also help to brighten and exfoliate the skin. But then this is a glycolic acid serum that you can get it in a dropper. And if that dropper really matters to you, because that experience of enjoying our skincare matters in order for us to use it. Like life is too short to use shitty skincare. Okay, okay. In that case, yeah, it's a glycolic acid in a dropper. I will give L'Oreal that. <laughs> my husband has heard me talk about all sorts of interesting discoveries um, about skincare. And he's already a very hygienic person. It was a huge selling point for me to the point where like he showers more often than I do. Is that too, too much information? No such thing as too much information. The one thing that I don't like to see was her dragging this across her face. We've cringed about this and it's because when you drag something across your face like a dropper and put it back in the little can, it can introduce bacteria, it can introduce fungus, things that are on your face into that bottle. Now this is why we love preservatives. If products are preserved correctly, shouldn't make a big difference. But at the same time, if you're doing this, you know, twice a day and putting it back in there, it could lead to that formula breaking down. Those preservatives are preserving the product and that happens over time. And if you can avoid it, it's a good practice to get into dropping it into your hand or dropping it without actually, you know, rubbing this thing across your face or across your cheek. Gives me the eebie-jeebies because I have used some natural products and I have done just this and I have seen what grows inside of said products. If you want a video on that, ooh, we could do one. Like sometimes it's the fact that some brands say that they're preservative free, which, um, we actually stand preservatives, so there's that. This is where we bring out our power tools. This is a power tool. This is an analog tool. I was shooting a movie in Italy and Aubrey Plaza and I were like sitting in her hotel room doing skincare and she had these two sort of like face stimulating wand things and we were both just like sort of zoning out doing it. And then I gave it back and she was like, no, I want you to keep that. So now I have like friendship face things. This is a solar wave. I think it has ultra something red light. Mostly I like to just depuff with it. This solar wave wand is very interesting. Now LED benefits have been shown in medical publications and studies. LED or these light emitting diodes actually penetrate light energy into the skin and can cause a cascade of effects. For some wavelengths, they can boost collagen, some can kill bacteria, some can help with you know blemishes in the skin or just overall skin support. But a lot of these devices are very, very different. And a lot of these devices aren't powerful enough. There are very few that I like and there are some very scary ones. I have tried some very scammy masks that do not work. I am very particular about LEDs, especially because they are expensive. One of the best that I've ever found has been the light stim. That one actually works. They give you little goggles that you need to protect your eyes with because like, hello, it's a big thing. There are some masks that I'd like to try. The Dr. Dennis Gross is like 400 something dollars, but I would like to try that. I'm just worried it doesn't protect the eyes. Now the Derma Beam actually seems very similar to the Dr. Dennis Gross, but that one actually has little things for your eyes. So it like protects your eyes better. I would just 
I don't know if the eyes aren't covered, like we were always taught when you are doing LED, you cover the eyes. Cause these are, you know, these are lights. They're causing changes in skin. Like, hello. Can something this small without needing eye protection really penetrate into the skin the way we need it to? I am a critic and a skeptic. Is it just me or does it also look like a shaving razor? But this little shaving razor doohickey is $149. It does say it is portable, which is a really good thing about this. It does say that it promotes collagen growth and fine lines and wrinkles. It looks like it does have red light therapy, so it's not a whole bunch of different lights. There are some that have like multiple wavelengths and I'm like, are you really doing those wavelengths properly? Cause like, it's really hard to dial those in than to make them strong enough to penetrate. There's a reason that those big panels that we have in dermatology clinics are $8,000. It does look very portable. It's an interesting promise, but I don't know. If you want me to try it so that you don't have to, let me know. But I'm also interested in the Dr. Dennis Gross and a couple of the other ones. So trying to spend my money appropriately. The comments box, the request box, it is yours. People love a gua sha and it has different sort of angles, but whatever you've put on under it should allow it to sort of smooth across your face and glide. I don't know who Debbie is, but I am in love with her personality. Now, what I am not in love with is her technique. So gua sha is supposed to be very gentle. It's for lymphatic drainage and stimulation. It's for massage, right? It's a stone. Now this was very important in East Asian culture. It was very important for centuries. And then of course, someone over here in the West had to be like, oh, it's a Chinese rock. We're gonna slap an exotic name on it and sell it at Sephora for $50. However, gua sha can be a really cool tool to massage the skin, to promote lymphatic drainage, to really uh, depuff as Debbie was alluding to and as the title of this video alludes to, especially because it is a nice cold tool. But when you are doing lymphatic drainage or lymphatic massage, you do not want to smear the skin like this. Like, can we get an instant replay on Debbie's gorgeous face? This, I'm sorry. If you're coming to me, I will kindly guide you and advise you in saying that is too much pressure. Our skin tissues are delicate. We don't want to destroy them. And the lymph nodes are also very delicate. You need very gentle pressure. If you're doing this, you're getting the muscles and you're going way too deep. Like we are not here to do some sports massage, right? That can be way too much. And you actually want to take lymphatic drainage very, very slowly. You can use light pressure. And if you are using a tool, you can use that to kind of push fluid along as well. You shouldn't be scooching this all across your face because you would be going too hard and not even doing that lymphatic drainage and just irritating the skin and potentially causing more inflammation. Gua sha's can be really fun, really relaxing when used properly, but I see a lot of people either using them wrong or overstating the claims of what they actually do or just charging like $400 for one. Like you don't need to spend $400 on a gua sha. If you want to, and if you have that kind of money, more power to you, but you can get a great gua sha for under 20 bucks. And gua sha is not a replacement for facial plastic surgery. Riddle me that. <laughs> so one of the first places that I think can sort of show lines, especially as someone I love to laugh, and I, it shows up here for, for my family, it shows up here and here. So we could do a little bit of eye cream. This is youth to the people. They're vegan. This is a really thick eye cream. Eye cream. <laughs> oh, do I have thoughts on eye cream? So let's break down what's awesome here. What is awesome is that Debbie is super in tune with her skin, with what she needs, with what she likes. And she is thinking about, you know, her smile lines, her laugh lines, and where those show up with her. She is identifying what they are and how she wants to treat them, which is awesome. But then let's remember what I hate about eye creams. And it's the fact that these companies say, eye creams will fix your face, but it's like, well, what are you going to fix? Because puffiness is very different from dark circles, which is very different than wrinkles, which is very different than dryness. Okay. Now this used to the people eye cream, this is a moisturizer. It has ceramides. It has vitamin C. It has hyaluronic acid. One of the main ingredients is glycerin, dicapryl carbonate, shea butter. This is literally a nice thick facial moisturizer. There are some used to the people products that I love and there are some that I don't love. I love this eye cream. I just would never use it as an eye cream. Use this all over the face. It has ceramides, so really good for barrier support. But Debbie is speaking about issues with wrinkles, not necessarily dryness, but with fine lines and wrinkles. She should be using a retinoid, a product with retinol, retinaldehyde, or retinoic acid, and a sunscreen during the day. Those are going to be the best things for fine lines and wrinkles. Those would go way farther and cost way less. And if she had to get them in an eye cream form, the Inculist has a retinol eye cream. There are other retinol eye creams I like even better. Murad has a new retinol 
eye cream that is half better. And if you want an eye cream that has sunscreen, Color Science has an amazing one with a really cool applicator, but you could also just use the retinoid from your doctor or dermatologist or a retinol that is, you know, okay for your eye area. And then you could just apply sunscreen during the day. That is going to be way better. Now, if you have dry skin, if you want something thick under makeup, if you want an eye hydrator, that is when you would use this product. It has some vitamin C. If you have some dark spots or hyperpigmentation, that is when you would use this. <sighs> you know how I feel about these things, but you know what? Her eyes look great. And I love the fact that she embraces how she smiles and the fact that she laughs because what good is life if you don't laugh? Remember Jeffree Star talking about how like he just doesn't emote because he doesn't want to wrinkle? Like, I'm sorry. I would rather have wrinkles and live a fulfilling life with lots of laughter and emotion rather than try to look stoic 24 seven just to avoid a little bit of crepey personal opinion on my part, but you know, just something to consider when we talk about society's beauty expectations. A couple women that I know created this line called Dew. Dew makes reusable eye masks. These guys you can use with whatever eye cream or eye serum that you normally do. So you don't have to be getting a bunch of new things. It's not ending up in landfills or whatever. These are a thing that I will bring to set and they just sort of adhere naturally. I freaking love these. Charlotte is someone that I know and love. She's on TikTok. She is amazing. She's also an esthetician and she's a brand founder and she and her other colleagues created this and it is so good. It's called the Forever Eye Mask. It is amazing. And it allows you to do what? It allows you to use your moisturizer as an eye cream. It allows you to use your eye cream as intended. It turns them all into eye masks and it actually makes these products work for you. They have a limited edition tattoo one that is currently out. Mwah. Chef's kiss. One of the best beauty purchases that I've made personally. And if you're someone who worries about the under eye area, if you have concerns with lines and wrinkles and be puffing and you don't know what products to use, get these because they are literally like push up bras for your under eyes. They hold things where they're supposed to be and then they allow your products to penetrate so they don't evaporate. Who is Debbie Ryan? Like what kind of skincare sorcery do you know? Cause she knows her, like she's been places, she's seen things, she knows what's up. I want, I, I question the washcloth. That could be a personal preference, but I want to know more about this human. This is the Globe by Sundry. I'm obsessed with it. I keep it in my fridge. The skincare globe balls. Oh, these again. <laughs> do these work? Yes. Are they better than ice? F yes. But are they necessary? No, you could do this with a cold spoon. Now what's nice about these cold globes is that they are not as irritating or potentially damaging to skin the way that ice is. Let's see how much these ones are. $14. This is not bad if you wanted to try one. And as Debbie Ryan has beautifully demonstrated, yeah, these do help to depuff. Now you could just use a spoon that you put in the fridge, but you could also use one of these. And she's actually using this a little bit more gently. So it's nice, you just glide it across the skin. It promotes some lymphatic stimulation, some lymphatic drainage, kind of helps with a little bit of that depuffing, and especially if you sleep on your face, really good to do first thing in the morning. And for 14 doll hairs, I'm into it. I didn't grow up with a lot of access to the conversations around beauty. It wasn't really something that I thought about, but my mom is very uh, sort of earthy and incredibly resourceful. And so I just remember as a kid, as a teen and as a young woman with her, if our hair was sort of dry because we were running around in the sun, she would like leave olive oil in and put it in like a shower cap and we would just do olive oil treatments. It's a cool tool to have to be able to do whatever you need based off of what's in your pantry. I think the biggest lesson that I've learned is the emphasis on skincare, the emphasis on drinking water, the emphasis on getting some rest and educating yourself allows it so that by the time you get to a point before you've even put on makeup, so much of the work is done for you. And then you can really highlight and emphasize the, the few things that you think are great and that are really outstanding and that you wanna play up or allow them to shine. We're gonna take these off, touch a water cream, and then you could just get a little bit. I think things like this are best applied with your fingertips because 
just sort of allows it to warm up to your like body temperature, your face temperature, and then allows you to really melt into the skin and get deeper in there. Her philosophy on skincare, we need more of this kind of skincare representation. Someone showing their real skin, someone explaining what they use and why, someone being in touch with what their skin needs and being open to trying new things. I love this. Now, the Tatcha water cream, I don't love, but the application I do. Look at that, she didn't stick her finger in it and swirl it around and put it on her face, which I am also guilty of. Again, this is why we love it when products are preserved. She actually used a little spoonie, which we do love, and applied it lovingly to her face. Now, everyone is obsessed with this. I don't think it's worth the hype. Maybe I need to go try it again. Maybe I need to give it a second 2.0, but I did not find it to be revolutionary. It's very expensive for what it is. I believe it's supposed to be J Beauty, but I don't actually know if they're a Japanese brand. I think they're an American brand that's inspired by Japanese beauty. It does have some ferment filtrates. The ingredients aren't horrible. They're just not great. And some of their products have like a little glitter a little sparkle and then it's like okay is the skincare actually making my face look good or is this makeup disguised as skincare you know what i'm saying that makes her happy that makes me happy because we should all use things that we like again life is too short to use shitty skincare or have shitty products or let shitty people destroy our mental health okay okay We've all got that one friend. However, <laughs> this product for the time being is not on my list, unless you demand it of me, in which I will oblige. So I don't like to wear a lot of foundation. It's definitely because I started wearing makeup on set from a younger age. So a thin moisturizer underneath and then this. What I love about it is it's SPF 30. So the SPF that I used to put on just as SPF it's the same amount as this, but this also, it sort of blurs and reflects the, the light in a really nice way. I have heard amazing things about this, yet I have never tried it. This is the Josh Rosebeck SPF 30, and I've heard the most amazing things about it. It's $55. Let's actually see what this has in it. This is a product that does kind of the natural thing, so I wouldn't recommend this for sensitive skin types based on what I'm seeing in the ingredients, but it doesn't look bad. Starts out with aloe vera, so it's not even water or universal solvent, it's aloe. We have shea butter, nice thick, right, moisturizing. We do have evening primrose oil, we have hemp seed, we have jojoba, I love jojoba. Barrage seed is also great. Almond, grape, sesame, avocado, all, like this is great. We even have olive oil in here, which in this blend, I do not mind. They have a 12% non-nano micronized zinc oxides. This is a physical sunscreen. I'd like to know if this flashes back or not. This actually looks really good for someone who's super, super sensitive to plant stuff. Don't use it, but there's no fragrance in here. I mean, this looks really great. Debbie Ryan, I believe that you have just made me add this to cart. Thank you. Also, a celebrity who understands the important use of sunscreen, like, this skincare philosophy plus great ingredients, this is a rarity and I am living for it. So first off, amazing knowledge of self-awareness and skincare. Debbie, who are you? Where do I get to know more of this person? I love her energy and what she stands for. Now on the flip side, she has some great tools in her routine, but I do not like the use of them. For instance, the washcloth, mm -hmm, not the best choice. This little facial wand, I, let's look into it. The gua sha, a, a great option, but just really stretching the skin up here. Now here's the question, was it really deep puffing? The Products that she used, she has some great ones. However, if you're worried about depuffing, mm, I might add something like a vasoconstrictor. Vasoconstrictor goes on the skin, it can actually help with depuffing. I would have put something like moisturizer, put it in the refrigerator. Use products and ingredients that are a little bit more lifting, something that has a tightening effect to the skin. That is what I would love to see in a depuffing skincare routine. Now, some of the tools and techniques are the most depuffing things about this, but a lot of the products, I really don't think so, and actually this thingy, I feel like this scrubby scrubby washcloth could actually make it worse. Don't know, but I like a lot of it, specifically these things, and I don't like some things, specifically <laughs> these things. But just as Debbie said in the beginning of this video, what works for one person doesn't work for everyone. And even as a medical esthetician who helps other people, who touches their skin, who gets to work with different types and treatments and skin stories, there are things that I have seen work across the board for people of a certain skin type, but not for others. Which is why the individual experience of enjoying and understanding our own skin and skincare 
is so important. That's also why this beautiful butterfly community is here if you would like to join and subscribe so that you can be a part of it, so you can be a skin intellectual, so you can learn a little bit more about the biology of your beauty and feel good about waking up and putting things on your face every day that actually serve a purpose but help you be the best version of yourself. So as Debbie Ryan said, stay hydrated, my friends, both orally by drinking enough water or caffeine and topically by applying the right things to our skin. And let me know which of these products I have to buy and try so that you don't have to. Always remember to be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next reaction video. If you want to watch that one about luxury skincare and models, oh yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.